So in what was Adam Bazim's toughest fight on paper, he puts in, I think, one of his better performances. He stops a hard Davis in eight rounds, and I liked what I seen in there. It was patient, it was workmanlike. At times the fight wasn't, I don't want to say it wasn't entertaining, but at times you had to really just kind of look into what was happening and know that it will catch fire eventually. And I don't want to say it caught fire necessarily, but Adam Mazim was able to put an exclamation mark on this fight. From the very first bell, you could see that the speed of Adam Mazim was going to trouble O'Hara Davis. Now, I thought O'Hara Davis would be a little more aggressive than he was. He did let shots go. He did try and you know throw some big haymakers and then went again to Adam Mazim's head and to body. But ultimately, the speed of Adam Mazim, the skill, everything on display from Adam Mazim. I mean, if you look at the stance of both fighters, O'Hara Davis has always had a very, very wide stance. And that's never been addressed throughout the course of his career. Now, there are some advantages to having a wide stance, but with the way O'Hara Davis's foot placement is, it he's just off balance all the flipping time. And it's never been addressed, no matter who he's been with, no matter what trainer he's been with, no matter what stage of his career he's been at, he's always made those mistakes. Now you would see in this fight that he was a lot more wary about what was coming back from literally early on, because his last fight, he can say what he wants to say about, oh, it was, I don't know, what was it, the excuse he used? He said it was like the wind or something, the hotel, the aircon was, made all these excuses. At the end of the day, it was a technical flaw in his last fight. He made mistakes early on. He was caught, he was punished, and that's the end of. Simple as that. In this fight, he was a lot more wary about what was going back, and especially after the first round. He wasn't necessarily hurt in the first round, but he could tell straight away that the speed of Adam Mazim was going to be a factor. Adam Mazim was the much, much, much faster guy. And even though O'Hara Davis has the longer reach, at long range, O'Hara Davis, you know, there's no ifs and buts, he's got the longer reach. But because Adam Mazim was so much faster, he was able to negate that. He was able to land some good jabs on O'Hara Davis, he was able to bust up his nose. And the nose, I believe it was a broken nose or a bust up nose against Josh Taylor, which, look, Against Josh Taylor, he was completely outclassed. I mean, it was just, it was one-sided beyond belief. He was dropped a couple of times. He was hit with loads of shots. He was ultimately taken out by a shot. He was a right hook from Josh Taylor that ultimately took him out a couple of years ago, well, more than a couple of years ago, but you know what I mean. But he said, O'Hara Davis, that it was more so the nose being broken and him not being able to breathe, which caused him to ultimately, you know, decide to sit out the count. Now, in this fight, early on, his nose, again, was starting to bleed. I wonder was there residual damage because you often hear from fighters who say when they break their nose once, especially in that kind of manner, Anthony Joshua was a very good example of it, he had it broken against Carlos Takam from, from a head clash, actually, if memory serves me correctly. It's always, you know, busted open now and again whenever he's been there or whenever he's been hit with it. And it was the same here again with O'Hara Davis. He was ultimately hit with a body shot. I think it was in round four, round five. He went down, he took a count, but ultimately he got back up. T to my surprise, because I actually thought, I think it was around four, around five, he was gonna, that, that was it. You know, he was gonna capitulate mentally and that was gonna be it, but he didn't. He was able to see out the round. He, he never really had a foothold in this fight. I mean, there's not a round I'd look at in the eight rounds of this fight where it happened, where I would look at and say, oh, Harry Davis won that round, or he necessarily had a share in it. It was pretty much out of museum. I was him the whole way. O'Hara Davis was trying to keep it at range. He wasn't, again, O'Hara Davis has a long reach. He has very primitive footwork, very poor footwork and a very wide stance. So it doesn't bode for him. You know, he's not gonna have a massive punch output. He's really only looking to land and set up those big shots. He wasn't able to do it in there against Adam Mazim and Adam Mazim was able to break him down. It wasn't a, you know, Adam Mazim throwing 100 punches around or anything like that. He was systematically breaking O'Hara Davis down. You could see it, you could see the confidence every single round was going from O'Hara Davis. And ultimately in round eight, he landed, I believe it was a left hook on O'Hara Davis. He went down. It didn't look like the most, necessarily devastating shot in the world O'Hara Davis went to a knee listen I'm not in O'Hara Davis's position I don't know what he was feeling in there you know at the moment that the punch was landed or the moment that he was administered the count I don't know it looked like he could have carried on it looked like he could have got up but I think he knew himself the right was on the wall he wasn't going to win this fight and he chose to sit the count out now 
Oh, Adam Azim, happy days. He's got the probably the best win of his career. I know he was European champion, but he won it against an absolute, you know, easy touch. This is the best win of his career, definitely by far, in terms of who he's been fighting prior to this. What would he do now? Now, a lot of people are saying that, you know, this version of Adam Azim will beat Dalton Smith. I don't necessarily know about that. I've watched Adam Azim, I've watched him for two years now. Like a long time I've watched Adam Azim. I've not done many videos on him for obvious reasons. I haven't, I've seen the talent that's there in terms of athletic ability. I've seen the speed, I've seen the, I don't want to necessarily say punching power because, you know, he's been in there with guys who you would expect him to beat, you know, in the case of Ryan the Charlton area level. In the case of some of the guys he's fought on the way to European or you know, European title level, they haven't been amazing. So I don't want to say punch about the speed is there, the athleticism is there, but the jury's still out. I've been a lot more impressed with Dalton Smith. I've been a lot more impressed there. And I think that Ben Shalom obviously knows that. A lot of people are saying that Adam Azim on this performance beats Dalton Smith. I wouldn't be picking him. If they fought next, I'd be making Dalton Smith favourite. I would. Don't know what Dalton Smith's situation is. He's not being mentioned by Eddie Hearn. He's not being talked about by Eddie Hearn. I know he's fought on Sky in the past. He's fought on Matro in the past. Don't know. And he's fought on Sky on boxer shows. He did that last year, I believe. So it's not like he's always been with Matro, so we don't know what's going to happen there. But for me, if they met next, Adam Mazim against Dalton Smith, I'd be making Dalton Smith favorite. Even off the back of this performance, yes, Adam Mazim has shown me more patience in the ring. But personally, I feel Dalton Smith has the higher C in it. J just for me, that's what, that's what I feel personally. In terms of O'Hara Davis, he's 32 years old, back-to-back -back defeats, both stoppage defeats. Listen, O'Hara Davis is an overachiever in many ways. He didn't have many amateur fights. He was actually trained by Tunde Ajay. I'll talk about Niar tomorrow at some point. I'm not gonna do it tonight. I did catch his fight yikes that's what i'll say about that he was trained originally by tunde ajaye he went to tony sims gym and then he obviously had those issues with those comments he made with the son which i'm not going to go into that I'll, I'll, i'm not going to even go there he was ultimately dropped by matroom by tony sims and kind of went in his own way he went to queensbury and then he's just kind of been floating around as a free agent ever since then i still think in spite of all that he's overachieved because yes o'hara davis Eddie Hearn is a great salesman. At one point, I actually thought O'Hara Davis would beat Josh Taylor. I wasn't doing videos at the time, but if I had been doing it, I would have picked him to beat Josh Taylor at the time when they fought in 2017. Upon reflection, you can see that, yikes, O'Hara Davis, I mean, the talent is just not there. He's got a lot of attributes that can help him get beyond his lack of finesse, his lack of talent, but it can only do so much. That's what I gotta say there. So he needs to have a look, assess things, and see what he wants to do. In terms of everything else, I leave it there. I hope you enjoyed the video. Smash the like button if you could. Subscribe, of course, if you haven't already. I think a few people who were at the copper box are actually because I'm literally five minutes away from the copper box, and I can see a lot of people walking along there. So I'm assuming a few people are staying in uh staying in the uh, little town here where they had the fight. So. I'll leave it there. Hope you enjoyed it. Smash the like button if you could. Subscribe, of course, if you haven't already. For now, I'll leave it there. Peace.